why are we only releasing one of our two rescue feral cats from their acclimation confinement? Malt Boss, the male cat, is doing great and he'll be released today. Emerald, the female, unfortunately has had a wound that just really hasn't been healing very well. So whereas Mob Boss gets to roam free, Emerald gets a trip to the vet. Okay, so tonight is the night to set Mob Boss free and so Brian put this door thing on, on the catio and so from what I understand all I need to do is do that and now they can get out well my boss can get out and yeah so I'm just gonna maybe prop it open a little bit okay, there and so hopefully tonight he'll figure out that he can leave the the area well not the whole area but our it'll stay around our house is our hope but he'll get out and do some exploring and be a cat again so and and we'll show you later when Brian gets home and can hold the camera for me what we did with Emerald today so we've set up Emerald to be over here. She's in this big dog crate that I've got a little cat carrier in and she's got her kitty litter and her water and her food. It's a little cramped for her right now, which is why I've kind of got her in this very little protected corner so that she feels some security because it's, it's a small little cage. It's on the ground. I'm not really happy about it, but we might move her into our Brian's shop just for the night even though it's kind of crowded in there just because I'm a little worried that she could tip this over and maybe get out or something during the night because this plastic kind of you can see it moves even though the bottom's all locked in it's but the the holes on the bottom part are about this big compared to these nice narrow ones here. So I'm a little worried that she could still get out if she got really rambunctious in the middle of the night. And she's she's a cage climber. She's a crazy cat, so I don't, I don't want her to do that and I don't want her to hurt herself either. So I'm a little worried just about tonight because tomorrow we're gonna take her in again to another vet. The vet I took her to today wasn't going to be able to do anything until a more extensive appointment could be arranged because they are going to have to sedate her and to be able to get it take a look at it because she's not a controllable cat that she, you can just even look at something. Not a friendly cat. <laughs> no. <laughs> she is a lot more chill with people being around I guess than, than mob boss is but she's still not a cat that you can handle so we've got her in here now and I'll probably keep her in here even after she gets home because I'm, I'm kind of thinking that they may have to put try and put a cone around her head or something like that to try and keep her from she's got a little wound that she's been licking and so, and it just keeps getting worse because of that. This will let me feed her <coughs> independently of Mob Boss and also because of it being up against the house and secluded from sight from anything. And also I've, we've got our motion detection lights up here, which if she is out here, after dark then that light will keep anything coming towards the house from 
continuing to come this far. It does a great job with everything, getting this close, protecting our rabbits and stuff. So I wanted to have her right here because of that. And also it's, it's probably one of the cooler spots up close to the house, just because it is in complete shade almost probably 99% of the day. Um, this little corner might get a little sliver of light, but other than that, it's in shade. So she should be pretty comfortable here, I'm thinking. So what did the first vet actually say about the cat? Did, were they even able to look at the cat close enough or it just was too wild to even give a good diagnosis? They, they weren't able to take her out of the cat carrier. So all he could really do was say that, that it was a bad wound that needed to be looked at right away, which made me kind of worried all day. And so I did look into maybe going to a 24 hour vet clinic, but after talking to the lady from, from the, the rescue. Janice. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure if that was a good idea. I felt good about going to the vet that I was used to going to because I'd already told them about what was going on and, and the cat we were adopting and, you know, and so they knew the plan and had agreed to still be the vet and things like that. So I felt good about going to them, but I'm a little bit more concerned about going to vets that I don't have any experience with. We're, we're gonna take her in tomorrow to see a vet that that she's already seen before and hopefully that will help some to have some of that history and things like that so this this was a vet that uh janice with the cat rescue yeah. had used yes okay. yes yep so we'll get little emerald taken care of and my boss will get to go out tonight and yeah all right want to show people your your wound? No, no. Um, I did have gloves on and I had my heavy Carhartt jacket, but the cats, when I went to try and get Emerald into the cage, I had a hold of her and I think my boss got me. <laughs> so, so probably when I was reaching, my sleeve came up at the same time the glove came down a little bit and he, he managed to get a lick in, which so it's pretty amazing because I could tell that they were trying to scratch me like everywhere. <laughs> so I was really glad that I had my Carhartt jacket on and nice thick gloves because otherwise this would have been a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, but I've got a, a little little scratch on me, so it's not a problem. The, the rabbits get me a lot worse sometimes. So you can see I've always got cuts on my hands from me not remembering to put my gloves on before I play with rabbits. All right, so stay tuned for Updates. what comes next. Emerald's wound is serious. We don't know exactly how she got it. The cat came to us that way. Hi, girl. She had a wound on her leg when we trapped her. Okay. She was limping, we took her to the vet. She didn't need an antibiotic, the vet said it was healing. But if you notice anything, let me know. Okay. The wound, we couldn't really see it very well when the cat was in the, in the cat house. She would always kind of hide that wound behind her. So it was very difficult to actually see that there was a wound and that it wasn't getting any better. Here's a few shots of the wound before and after we took her to the vet to get her sutured up, she was very sedated when we brought her home, making it a lot easier to get these pictures. For this last clip, I set up a camera as it got dark to see if I might capture Mob Boss heading out for the first time. I just put in a fully charged battery and let it run as long as it could while we went to bed. The next morning I was happy to see that it worked.